I try not to be a pessimistic person. I like to be a glass half full type of a person. Most of the time I live my life. But there is a sad reality that we do have to address as a dynasty community. When you look at most of the last 10 years, at least one wide receiver out of the top three in each draft, at least one of them are disappointing you. Now I like all three of the top wide receivers. Marvin Harrison Jr., Romo Dunze, Malik Neighbors. I like all of them. In fact, if one of them came out in 2025 or in 2023, one of them would probably be the wide receiver one in that particular class. But there is a difficult reality to accept and we're gonna have to go through that reality today and what I think you should do with these picks right here. So this is a new channel exclusively for Dynasty. So please go down there and drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel to show your support if you get value from this video today. So what I wanted to do here for this particular video is I want to discuss some of the last 10 years of each class and what the top three wide receivers in their particular classes did in Dynasty Fantasy Football. Now, I wanted to exclude 2023 because it's still really early, right? Like, Quentin Johnston is a guy that I discussed a couple videos ago and saying, yes, he looks disappointing today, but things seem to be opening up with him now with Jim Harbaugh as the coach and now with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams both out of the building. So there's a lot of things that could still happen. I wanted to take 2014 to 2022 and look at the top three wide receivers in those classes and see how they come out. So you can see on the screen right here, in 2014, this was in many people's eyes, the strongest draft class before this year's class. 2024 is the strongest draft class at the wide receiver position since 2014. And those top three picks in 2014 were Sammy Watkins, Mike Evans, and Odo Beckham Jr. Now there's one guy that stands out here who never really had a great fantasy season and never lived up to any sort of hype that anyone had in Dynasty, and that guy was Sammy Watkins. So there's one guy right there that did not do well as a top three wide receiver pick in his draft class. Let's move on to 2015. Amari Cooper went to Oakland, Kevin White went to Chicago, and Devontae Parker went to Miami. Two of those guys, big disappointments. Kevin White was an outright bust. Kevin White, a lot of people watching this video probably don't even know who that was. I remember that guy, and I remember being really high on him out of West Virginia. I was a big Kevin White guy, massive disappointment. Devontae Parker, mostly a disappointment. Came on a little bit towards the end of his tenure with Miami, but for the most part, Devontae Parker, massive disappointment. 2017, Corey Davis went to Tennessee, Mike Williams went to the Los Angeles Chargers, and John Ross went to the Cincinnati Bengals. You could argue all of them are disappointments. Now, one of them was an outright bust. John Ross was a straight up bust. Fastest wide receiver before Xavier Worthy took that time over just a couple months ago. John Ross was a total bust in fantasy football. Corey Davis, for the most part, mostly a bust. He had one really good season in his contract year that saved and it at least, at the very least, salvaged some of his dynasty value. So I can't say he was a complete bust, but disappointing, absolutely. And then Mike Williams, I would say mostly disappointing, but you know, there's been some top you know, 15, 20-ish production from Mike Williams on certain weeks. 2018, DJ Moore to Carolina, Calvary Lee to Atlanta, and Cortland Sun to Denver. Now, this is the first class that I would say none of them were outright busts here. You know, none of these guys were complete busts at that level. DJ Moore, I would say, has been pretty good in Dynasty. I think we all agree, especially now that he was with Chicago. Calvin Ridley, for the most part, early on in his career, a very good dynasty asset. And Cortland Sutton, I would say mildly disappointing. But again, for the range that you were getting him at and rookie drafts at that time, you didn't have to spend a first rounder on Cortland Sutton. So I would say the disappointment level as opposed to where you purchased him in dynasty rookie drafts, it's not that high. It's only mildly disappointing, I would say. 2019, Hollywood Brown went to Baltimore, Nikhil Harry went to New England, and Debo Samuel went to San Francisco. Hollywood Brown, I would say, is pretty disappointing. I think most people would agree with this. Never a top 20 season in Baltimore. Arizona, flash some production, but it really hasn't happened yet. And Nikhil Harry, flat out bust. The only guy I would say was good was Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel has had elite level production in certain seasons. 2020, Henry Ruggs to the Raiders. 
Jerry Judy to the Broncos, and CeeDee Lamb to Dallas. Henry Ruggs, obviously other issues there. No longer in the league. We'll never see him in the NFL again. Outright bust. Jerry Judy, pretty big bust. Massive disappointment at the very least. And C.D. Lamb, obviously, that's terrific. C.D. Lamb did terrific in Dynasty. He's a top Dynasty asset to this very day. 2021, Jamar Chase to Cincy, Jalen Waddle to Miami, and Devonta Smith to Philly. Now, I'm going to probably get some pushback on this. I consider Devonta Smith to be a little bit of a disappointment. If you think about at the time when we were drafting Devonta Smith in Dynasty rookie drafts, when, De when Devonta Smith got drafted to the Eagles, at that time, he was a their number one by a mile. By a mile. There was no A.J. Brown. None of that stuff. It was Devonta Smith that Philadelphia traded up to get in the first round. So the fact that he hasn't had a massive top 10 wide receiver season, that's a little disappointing compared to where you drafted him in Dynasty Rookie Drafts. And that is important to keep in mind. Where you drafted him, as opposed to where they have finished in Dynasty, that's important to remember, and that's the main point of this video. And obviously, Jamar is great. Dynasty asset, top tier. And Jalen Waddle, for the most part, very good Dynasty asset. 2022, the last one, Drake London, Garrett Wilson, and Chris Olave. I would argue Drake London has been pretty disappointing so far. For the production that you're getting from where you drafted him, how many people are happy about that? Garrett Wilson, I'd argue a very similar point right here. Now, I like both these guys. I think they will both have better seasons this year. But there's no question where you drafted them, they have not lived up to the production of where you drafted them. That's the whole point here. So there's obviously some points that we could argue with this, with this set of data right here, right? We could argue, well, in 2016, if you remember back this far, Corey Coleman was not viewed as a consensus top three guy. In fact, Laquan Treadwell was supposed to be a top three wide receiver in that class. So there's some classes in here that there wasn't a consensus top three like there is this year with Marvin Harrison, with Malik Neighbors, and with Romo Dunze. So there's been years where there hasn't been consensus top three players. Let's isolate the draft classes where the wide receiver selected were the consensus top three. There's three classes, 2014, 2015, and 2020. Those were the three seasons that we can isolate that had consensus top three picks here. So in 2014, obviously, like I said, Sammy Watkins was the pretty clear bust out of that class. 2015, Kevin White outright bust, and Devonta Parker mostly disappointing. And 2020, the top two guys, pretty big busts. So we're not isolating this and saying, Oh, well, the top three guys are all competitive and they're all very good. No, there's busts in those categories right here. Now, let's even go deeper than this. Let's go deeper to the point where we say that the first three wide receivers off the board were top 15 picks in the NFL draft. So there's a couple of those classes right here. 2014, 2015, 2017, 2021, and 2022. Again, 2014, Sammy Watkins, the big issue there. Kevin White... 2015, along with Devontae Parker. 2017, Corey Davis, pretty big bust. John Ross, pretty big bust as well. 2021 and 2022, again, we can argue whether or not these guys are busts. I don't think there's a bust on this list, but again, I would put Devonta Smith, Drake London, and Garrett Wilson in the mildly disappointing category here in Dynasty Fantasy Football. Now, I think a very fair question in regards to this is if you were to ask me, well, if, if one of these wide receivers busts, is it going to be their fault because they're not good? No, I don't believe that's the case. If one of them busts, I think it's not because they're not good. Let's look back specifically at some of those other classes where the first three wide receivers off the board were in the top 15 picks. 2014 is a great example. The guy who was not good, Sammy Watkins, he got drafted to Buffalo. This was before they had Josh Allen. They hadn't figured the quarterback out since Jim Kelly. <laughs> they were dealing with garbage at quarterback. So Sammy Watkins never could get his footing. That's a problem. 2015, Kevin White to Chicago, Devontae Parker to Miami. Neither one of them had a good quarterback either. We could argue Devontae Parker broke out in fantasy and finally started performing well when they got an answer at quarterback. So again, keep in mind, when I'm going through this and what, what I just went through with you guys, 
This is not to say that all of these guys are going to be busts, or even one of them is going to be a bust. You have the 2021-2022 class, there's not a single bust on that list. They're all good dynasty assets at the very least, and very strong dynasty assets at the very best. So there's no question here, I am not saying that all these wide receivers are going to be problems to some extent. I like all of the top three wide receivers. I am big on Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, and Marvin Harrison Jr. Again, I think if all of them had been split into their own drafts, they'd all be the number one in their classes in all likelihood. What's the point of me saying all this then? Am I, should I advise you guys to sell a top four pick in Dynasty? No, I'm not saying that. I would not sell a top four pick. I don't think any of them will outright bust. I think they're all too good to just be outright busts in Dynasty Fantasy Football. They will have plenty of Dynasty value a year from now, likely in two years as well. But we have to remember this. Dynasty is a risky game. It's a very risky game. You have to make calculated decisions based on your own research that you do and based on how you feel about certain players. So here's an example of something that maybe you'd consider doing. This is something I would consider doing. On draft night, if you're watching the NFL draft, and for example, you see Marvin Harrison Jr. go to the Cardinals and you see Malik Neighbors go to the Los Angeles Chargers. So that leaves Romo Dunze still up in the air about where he's gonna go. In all likelihood, they're probably all going to be top 15 at the very least and top 10 picks in the, in the NFL draft this year. So the chances that he goes to a New York Giants or New England Patriots, that could be pretty decent here. Do you wanna stick with Romo Dunze or Malik Neighbors if they go to one of those places, in all likelihood, they'll disappoint you. I'm not trying to be a downer here. I don't want to be that guy. But what I'm saying is that at least one of these wide receivers, since they are all top 10 picks, are likely going to disappoint you. And it won't be based on their own talent. That's the biggest downer here, is that since they're all top 10, top 15 picks, one of them is likely going to go to a very, very bad landing spot for them. And that is going to affect their dynasty value. And it will leave you disappointed in what their output is in dynasty fantasy football. Now, if you're interested in getting more in depth about all these wide receivers and all the prospects in this 2024 dynasty rookie class, there's two options here. Number one, you can join the Patreon today where I'm breaking down the film on as many wide receivers in this class as I can get to. And it's helped me find guys like Jaden Reed, Tank Dell, and Josh Downs in the middle of your Dynasty Rookie Drafts. And number two, stay on the lookout for the release of my 2024 Dynasty Rookie Draft Guide, which will help you find more steals, more values, and the best picks in Dynasty Rookie Drafts.